I'm not particularly religious, but when I was a child, I was taught to fear God, but more importantly, to fear the priest, a man never ever to be challenged or questioned. Let me tell you about one. It was Thursday, the 12th of June, 1986. I just got home from work early for the exact same reason that thousands of others had, because that night Northern Ireland were to face the great Brazil in the World Cup finals in Mexico. Now, no one seriously believed that they could actually beat Brazil. The best we hoped was that they would give Brazil a good run for their money, but it was a match not to be missed. The kickoff was at six o'clock, and while I grabbed a quick bite to eat, my beautiful wife, Paula, decided to get, I use the word beautiful because she's sitting beside me. Uh, my beautiful wife, Paula, decided to give our three little girls a bath. Excellent timing, I thought. Aged six, four, and three, they were not at all interested in football, and having them upstairs out of the way was therefore perfect. As I settled down to watch the pre-match TV commentary, Paula shepherded the girls up the stairs to the bathroom. That's right, pet. You, come, you get yourself comfy for the match. I'll look after your children all by myself. I feared a little for my future after the match. On the TV, the excitement was electric. and My heart was pounding as the referee blew his whistle and the crowd in Mexico roared. As usual, there was a small contingent of Northern Ireland fans at the match. I was always so envious of them. How do those guys do it? Obviously not married, I thought. Anyway, the class of the Brazilians was apparent from the start. Our lads looked cumbersome and slow compared to the grace and speed of the Brazilians. It was a wonderful spectacle to watch, and I trembled with anticipation at what lay ahead over the next hour and a half. And then the doorbell rang. At first I didn't move, but it rang again. And I sensed a little bit more insistently this time. I prayed the beautiful Paula would come down and answer it, but it rang a third time. And then she shouted, Jim, for God's sake, get that. I can't leave the girls, they're in the bath. I swore and jumped up, walking backwards out of the room, never losing sight of the TV screen. I looked towards the front door. Shit. Through the glass, I could see the unmistakable figure of our parish priest, Father Maguire. And worse, he could see me and waved a cheery hello. Every, anyone else I would have happily waved away. But with a lifelong fear of priests, I opened the door. Hello, Father. How are you? Do you want Paula? Uh, she's busy with the girls' bath right now, earnestly hoping this would see him off. Oh, no, Jim, as you've only just moved into the parish, I thought I should pay you a quick visit to see you and your lovely family. And with that, he walked straight past me into the living room. I slammed the door and ran after him. What a lovely home, Jim. Can I sit here? He pointed to the chair by the TV. I nodded and he plonked himself down. I was just watching the big match, Father. Great night, I whimpered. Ah, uh, I don't follow the football myself at all. Would you mind switching it off, Jim, so we can talk? I find it very distracting. I gasped, but like a frightened child, I obeyed and turned the set off, hoping I'd only miss a few minutes and be rid of the bugger. But he talked and talked and talked about declining attendances at mass and latecomers and poorly controlled children and, of course, depleted Farish parish funds. Yes, Father. Uh -huh. Yes, Father. Oh, of course, Father. Yes, Father. My brain was screaming. The match, go away for fuck's sake. But he just prattled on and on. I checked the mantelpiece clock and realized with her that he'd been talking for half an hour. I'd missed the most of the first half. My brain was boiling. And then suddenly he clapped his hands. Well, Jim, it was nice to see you. I'm sorry Paul has been busy with the children. But maybe another time I can see the whole family. I'd better get on. Well, I wanted to hug him there and then. I jumped to my feet and smiled. Ach, Father, some other time. Thanks so much for calling. 
It was lovely to see you. I flied through clenched teeth. I turned to the living room door when it burst open and in came the beautiful Paula. <laughs> ah, Father, how are you? It's so good of you to call. Jim, did you get Father a cup of tea? I glared at her and wanted to scream, no, but too late. Father hadn't and beamed. Well, now that would be lovely, Paula. Thank you. And maybe since I'm here, I can meet the wee girls. I saw them at last and I thought they were just a credit to the both of you. They were so well behaved. He turned and sat down. I just wanted to cry. The match was now in the second half and she was bloody making them tea. Soon the girls appeared in their pajamas and were introduced to father, who by now was enjoying his second cup of tea, along with a buttered scone. I sat in misery, repeatedly checking the clock as Paula chatted away with the priest. There were now only 20 minutes of the match left and eventually the chat dried up. I prayed that now at last he would go and then father spoke. Well, since I'm here now with all your lovely family, would you like me to bless the house? I jumped to my feet to scream no, but Paula glared at me with a withering look. She turned to Father. Well, Father, that would be just beautiful. That's awfully good of you, thank you. Isn't that right, Jim? She threw another deadly glare in my direction. Yes, of course, Father, I feebly whimpered. The priest gathered us around, produced his prayer book and began reciting the most incredibly long prayer of blessing I'd ever heard. I was still furtively checking the clock. The children knelt like little angels beside their mother with hands clasped together in solemn devotion. I was praying a very different and much darker prayer. But at last it was over. Father patted each of the girls on the head, complimented them on their prayerfulness. Then slowly, oh, so slowly, he moved towards the front door. All the while talking and even promising to come back sometime soon to visit. I fucking hell would freeze over, I thought. He got into his car and waved as he drove off, Paula and the girls enthusiastically waving back. I sprinted to the living room, turned on the TV, and my heart stopped. The match was over. It's over for God's sake, I cried. I've missed the biggest match this year for that fucking priest. Oh, for God's sake, Jim, scolded Paula. Stop shouting, mind your language. You'll frighten the girls. You know, for God's sake, the match will be on later, on match of the day. None of us even knows the score. And of course she was right. My pain and frustration began to subside, just a little. Only a couple of hours to wait, avoid the TV news, and soon I would see the magic of Brazil against Northern Ireland. I relaxed into my chair. Thank you, love, I called to the beautiful Paula. Thank you for keeping me sane. And the phone rang. I picked it up. It was my mother. Well, son, wasn't that a fantastic match? And didn't Northern play so well? I tried to interrupt, but she persisted. But I think Brazil were just too good for them. 3-0 was a fair score, don't you think, son? She didn't forgive me for quite a while for the profanity that exploded from my lips just then. Sadly, I didn't fear her as much as that bloody priest. Oh, <laughs> Jim, I'm crying with laughter here. Oh, that's so funny. Your God bless, your sainted mother. <laughs> I have to ask, I have to ask, is this backdrop a political statement of some sort? It's, it's lockdown. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to think, I was thinking, are you making it some, you know, statement or <clears throat> is this just a reflection of your feelings? It's, it's about how I feel. I, I do have to say, and I have refer, referred, you know, made mention of her before, but we all know that Paula is a long-suffering saint. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and Paula, someday, 
I hope we will get your versions of the stories that Jim shares with us. You wouldn't recognize it. <laughs> uh, I can also hear Peter uh, in the background. No, that was the dog. <laughs> Peter's gone home. The, the poor old dog has dementia and arthritis, and it was trying to climb up on the sofa, and it fell down three times. Oh. So I had a choice to make uh, a, a, a serious... Uh, 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 issue here, a dilemma. Do I stop the story and help the dog, or do I carry on like a good showbiz pro? <laughs> well, you are from showbiz stock, so you know the rules. <laughs> it must go on. Jim, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Absolute joy. Uh, brilliant story.